Hi, um, so I'm Karis Reed. I'm the brand manager of Radical Forge. We are a game dev studio based in Middlesbrough, um, but half of our staff work in Middlesbrough, and half of them all work remotely, um, like I do, so I work in Manchester. Um, so we do a ton of work on our own IPs, our own games, but we also do work, uh, I'm doing a ton of co-dev work with other companies. Um, personally, in my spare time, I do blogs, YouTube videos, and TikTok videos, um, all about the games industry and brand management. Um, I also run a fitness community for game developers, which is called Game Devs. Uh, and my talk today is uh, about encouraging staff creative freedom whilst protecting your studio. So the reason I'm doing this talk is that I put a poll on Twitter, and <laughs> overwhelmingly, uh, this is a talk that people want to hear about. Um, it's also quite apt, because it's something that we're working on right now at the studio, and something I'm working on in the last few weeks. So all of the information that I'm going to share with you today is super up to date. Cool, so I'm going to talk a little bit about balancing employee freedom and also risk aversion. Um, so some of the rules on the screen, they might be rules that you know might be in place at the companies that you work at. They might also be rules that you've had in place at other companies that drive you, driven you a little bit mental. Um, so there's rules there like any IPs created whilst you're here, they belong to us. Um, you know, you cannot appear on podcasts or be interviewed without our permission. Um, you can only say a set line about our game when it launches. Um, and all of those rules are very restrictive, right? Um, and they're also very unattractive to creatives. And I think that we've been seeing this like big kind of like pushback against rules like this in the industry at the moment. Oh. <laughs> um, and I think the reason that is, is because working games has changed significantly. Um, part of that is due to the pandemic. Um, so you know, everyone has to go away for a few years and like work remotely. And now we're going back into the world of work and there's a ton of remote work opportunities. I think a lot of people are thinking about, you know, if a change like that that's so humongous can, you know, positively impact our work-life balance. Are there other rules and other things that we've been taking for granted that maybe we could change and get a more positive work-life balance out there? So you're seeing a lot of game companies thinking about putting in place like four-day working weeks, um, and those things seem to be going very well. I think there's a lot of pushback around other things around work and sort of taking stuff for granted. Um, another thing to take into consideration is that Everyone has uh, professional profiles nowadays. You know, uh, you also have a lot of people that have, you know, their own personal brands around the work and stuff that they do. Um, and all of that, you know, comes to people have more time and interest in doing personal work nowadays. Um, so rules like this that I showed you before are actually directly conflicting with what people are looking for nowadays. So there's lots of valid reasons why rules like that would be in place, and it's totally fair. There are size of companies that are like so huge you just can't have flexibility on this, and that makes total sense. But I think that there are a lot of bubbling small game studios in the UK where we can have some flexibility around this, and we can start having these conversations of whether that's possible at certain studios and with their cultures. Um, so some reasons for these might be, you know, legal concerns, like companies themselves, they don't want to be sued, they also don't want their employees to be sued. Um, information control, like oftentimes you can work with huge IPs with thousands of players, thousands of fans, we don't want to get in the wrong information from places and having you know, this bias storm online is totally fair. Um, another thing to think about is employee retention, right? Um, you know, it can seem quite counterintuitive to encourage your employees to do their own personal work or have a ton of growth because maybe they'll grow out of working with you, maybe they'll want to set up their own companies and then you lose those employees. Um, another thing to think about is you know, reputation protection. You know, I'm a brand manager, <laughs> like all of my work is trying to make sure that companies have like a great brand presence. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy to get that kind of stuff out there. So if you have you know, a person online who's talking about something that's kind of controversial, that can be something that you know, <laughs> kind of screws up a ton of stuff and a ton of work you've been doing. It can be quite hard to kind of roll back on. Um, and another thing that we need to kind of consider is that although those are all valid reasons, there are a ton of problems that we're facing as an industry right now. Um, so one of the things to think about, it's not just our industry, it's a ton of other industries, is that you know, decades back you'd have a thing where people start a company, they'd be that company for their entire careers and they would just get promoted that way. Whereas nowadays you're seeing you know, a lot more people job hopping, you're seeing a lot more people climbing the ladder through work diagonally. Uh, even if you look at UQ's own statistics, <laughs> uh, they actually track how many people are you know, moving in workplaces diagonally. Um, another thing that we're kind of thinking about, specifically in games, is that our projects are much larger. You know, we have much more ambitious uh, goals, we also have much larger teams. So we're thinking about, you know, games are taking on average three to five years to make. Uh, that's a very long time, it's very hard to keep people motivated, it's very hard to retain people to work on a project that's going to last that long. Um, another problem that I'm sure you've seen in one way or some capacity at the companies that you work at 
is that there is a big senior shortage. You know, we need seniors faster than we're able to get people in the industry and trained up to a senior level. Um, and that's something I think a lot of companies are dealing with at the moment. Um, so, you know, what are companies thinking? What are we thinking as a studio? You know, we're thinking about keeping our talent. Uh, we're thinking about keeping them mo motivated long term through these very long projects. Uh, we're also thinking about, okay, we need to encourage their growth so they can become these seniors that we really desperately need. Um, and the great thing about this is that personal work actually helps with a lot of these things. Um, so, in the <coughs> process, you don't need to read all of these, uh, but these are the top reasons why most people leave their jobs, right? So there's 11 reasons on that, and the one thing that you need to take away is <coughs> six reasons on that can actually be really satiated and really helped by if someone has the freedom to do their own personal work. Um, I actually even include switching careers on there as radical forward ourselves, because if we have people that come to us, they start with us, and they say, you know what, I do animation now, but I'm actually more interested in being a concept artist. That isn't something that scares us. We're not worried about not having an animator down the line. It's actually something we're like, okay, we're taking this seriously. We want to help encourage you to go that way. If we have any roles that open up that way, we've got to let you know first. Because when we hire people, we're not just hiring them for the skills that they have. We're hiring them as people and the values because they fit into our company culture. So there's lots of positives, I'm sure you can imagine, to employees having creative freedom. Uh, first up is obviously improvement. You know, there's also you know share, sharing knowledge. Um, not only within like your company, but also um, as an industry. Um, so when you're you know sharing that knowledge and stuff online, you can have a lot of people who they may end up being. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I always put in place like this rule where I don't drink coffee on the day that I do talks because like I get jitters. <laughs> but it turns out even without caffeine, I'm the same. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, also, uh, we have sharing knowledge. Sorry, I'll just go over this point. Um, so, you know, this isn't just like internally in your own company. This is also within the wider industry because those people that you're telling knowledge to, you know, they may end up being your future colleagues. Um, there's things like motivation, you know, throughout long projects, um, independence, confidence, new skills. And some of these things are actually leadership qualities that can help people become those seniors that we desperately need. Um, another thing is advocacy. So if you have people within your company that are confident and they are able to you know, have those kind of brand values and talk to people about the work that you do, that's a really important skill to have at a studio and to have a lot of staff that can do that, that's really good. Um, so you might be thinking, you know, all of those kind of things, you can do that within a studio, within your workplace. I have to disagree. I think that a lot of these aims um, are actually, it's a lot more helpful if you have your own personal projects to do these in. It's a lot more risk free. It's unattached to you know where the project's at in its moment in time. Um, it's also something where you know people are free to fail. Um, another aspect of this is also that you know people are free to work with people outside of the workplace. So that means that you know they gain skills in working with different disciplines. It means that they gain skills in working with different personalities, which makes your team a lot more adaptable when you're hiring new people into it. So hopefully you're one over now. Uh, let's just let's just say that you are. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, well, okay, if that's the kind of thing that we want to do, how do we actually put that into place? Um, so there's a boring bit, and we're going to we're going to speed on by the boring bit as much as possible. If you do want to talk to talk about this more, I can talk to you about it afterwards. Um, so there's a process of how you need to put guidelines like this in place for your employees. So first off, you know, you have your legal considerations. You need to take into account, you know, what contracts you're in, uh, what's legally binding. Um, another thing that you need to consider is, okay, we need to have an ideal future agreement. So for us, you know, when we're doing code ed work, we're working with other studios, or when we're going to work with publishers, we need to think, okay, when we're talking about what, what kind of freedom we have to say the things that we want to be able to say, this is the ideal thing. How can we work from there? And you know, we're always going to work with those companies on what we want and what they want, so we can get you know an ideal scenario. But it's something that you need to have set in place, otherwise you're going to negotiation with no idea of what you need comms-wise. <clears throat> From there, you need to think about you know, requirements to protect your business and your staff. So the most basic example of this I have is, you know when you see on people's profiles where it says, the uh, views here, they are of my own and not of my employer. That's a really basic example of a way that protects the business, but also allows the staff to have the freedom to say what they want to say. Um, and then the last one here is kind of like brand perception requirements. So for instance, when we're allowing people to do their own personal work, we don't want them to be kind of 
resting on the fact that they are someone that works at our company. We don't want their stuff to be surrounding our company per se. Um, so it, it's one of those things where if someone had a profile or a product and it was all kind of to do with our stuff at the core of it, that's not something we'd be happy with. So you kind of have to have set lines that show the clarity and like what people can and can't do. Um, so you take all of these things and they turn into employee handbook policies, which I'm sure you're probably quite aware of. Um, so these cover things like social media, um, this covers things like you know uh, public speaking like this, um, any and all of that stuff. And I think what a lot of companies, maybe they do think about it, but maybe some people do it by mistake, is making sure that your handbook policies are in plain English and ju not just legalese. So there are a lot of big companies that actually write them up so they seem quite scary and put people off from doing any kind of personal work because they don't want to get into any legal messes. Whereas with us, we wanted to encourage people to do it, so we need to have them written in plain English. So, here's the exciting bit. We're through all of that kind of uh, legal and HR stuff. Um, so, to kind of put these things in place, uh, I think there's, there's three aspects to it, and the first one is encouragement, right? So we've given the people the freedom. We've, we've told them in clear English what they can and they can't do. Um, so something that we do at Radical Forge is uh, First Friday. So, you know, we walk the talk. We walk the talk? You know what? We walk the talk. <laughs> uh, so we have First Fridays. So the first Friday of every month is entirely free for employees to do and work on anything they want to. So they can work on their personal work. They can work together on that stuff. They can work with external people on that stuff. Our one request is that they share it and they tell us what they're working on so we can see how that progresses. Um, another thing is, you know, space to share within our company. So we have like a tips channel on our Slack, so people can share tips about development. They can share tips about, you know, video editing, any of that stuff. They have free time to do that stuff. Uh, we also have a work in progress channel, the same thing. But it means that, you know, people get to get feedback from actual industry professionals that are in their workplace, and they're free to do it. You know, we're not going to tell them off for it. So we're not going to tell them off for doing it at lunch. Um, you know. We also actively encourage, as a part of our culture, people to tell us, you know, if they're working on initiatives, if they're working on charity drives, if they're doing streaming. We want to be able to show up and support our colleagues. Um, another thing we do that I don't think every company does um, is that we will share initiatives that our colleagues work on on our social media to get the word out. Um, so, for instance, I have a, a colleague of mine who is our lead QA, he's called Dan. Uh, he worked on this funding initiative where people that were for, from you know kind of poorer income backgrounds that wouldn't be able to afford to go to EGX he set up funding so that people could go and that's something as a company we're like yes we, we fully vouch for like Dan doing this stuff we want to share that news as much as we possibly can um, another example would be I had a colleague that put up a networking event in Middlesbrough um, and that was like a non-drinking event and that's something where we're like yeah that aligns with our studio values that's something we want to be able to get out there and I think a lot of other companies wouldn't necessarily do that because they don't want to put the brand name behind what their employees are doing. And that makes sense, but it's also like, we hire these people, we know them, we trust them, we have the same values as them. Um, another thing we do that not necessarily every company does is uh, we tell people that there's a home there for, for them um, at the company. So for instance, we know by encouraging people um, to get out there, you know, improve their skills, do personal work, we know that people are going to turn around to us at some point and say, you know what, I want to go, I want to set up my own studio. Or they're going to say, hey, I've got a job offer for, to work on like my dream game. And that's something that like we'd be really proud of when that happens. Like, <laughs> if that's happening, we're doing something right. We're not really afraid of those people leaving us because they're leaving us for positive reasons. Um, and I think it's something where we've had people before that have left us to go work with like their dream teams on something. And we've said to them, look, we really enjoyed working with you. If, if the only reason you were leaving is because it's this dream project, you can come back to us. That's totally fine. And people have done. <laughs> so it works, right? Um, another thing to take into consideration is that management work on their own personal work too. So this isn't something where it's just like juniors are training up and getting experience. It's also something where at the company, our culture, it comes down from the top. We have people that are at the top of the studio um, in the C-suite that, you know, they work on their own games. We have people that work on their own comic books. Uh, like I said at the start of this presentation, you know, I do my own blogs and I do my own videos. And I think that really helps make it kind of like a community of creators that's happening in our workplace. Oh, God. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and then the next aspect of this is like, you know, you're giving people a freedom, you're giving them the encouragement. And then you need to give them the support, right? 
Um, so when people come to me and they say, hey, Karis, I want to work you know, on this video series. Um, is there anything that I need to know that I need to avoid, etc.? Um, I like say, <laughs> if, any, if something blows up, if you say something online, if you get some backlash or something, like let me know. You know, I've had so much experience in social media. I now work in brand management. I'm sure there's something I can do to help, or we can kind of figure out a strategy or something, right? Um, and that kind of goes into like how much of the company we let people be open with advice and giving advice on things that are like outside of work. Um, so, for instance, we've had people that have been working on their own games. They're looking to start pitching them. We will have our publishing team, we'll happily talk to them about how you can actually pitch to people. Uh, there's even things like introductions where we'll be like, let us get you in touch with people that you can pitch to. Um, that is something that we, we are happy to do. Um, another aspect of this is that if people are working on you know, these charity initiatives, these cool events, and they align with our brand values and what we're doing as a studio at that time, people can approach us for funding. Like we are more than happy um, to do that. If it's a colleague at our company, you know, all aligns well, we're happy to look into if we can help fund them and like encourage them to go that way. Another really cool thing that has kind of came up is that people have skill swaps. So you'll have somebody that's working on a game and they're like, oh, you know what, I need some key art for this thing. Or you'll have someone that's like, oh, I need to figure out how to do like video editing for this thing. They will swap their skills, which is really nice. Like I love working in a place that you have that kind of ability. Cool, and then the last one, um, so opportunities. Um, so, you know, it's not just like, you know, having that freedom, having that encouragement, you know, having the support there, you also have to think about, are you giving people opportunities to get themselves out there? So whenever we have any emails through, where, you know, it's a university, it's a games event, anything like that, and they're looking for speakers for panels and stuff, we put that out to the entire company. So anyone that is interested in getting that kind of experience, we are happy to support them and put them out there and give them those opportunities. Uh, same with like game jams and stuff like that. <coughs> like we give people the opportunity to uh, do game jams at work or with other people outside of work, as long as they are like, we've kind of said, you know, if you want to try out doing different roles within those game jams, that is really encouraged because we want people to understand what their colleagues are doing and to understand other disciplines um, and to share those with the company. Um, Another thing that we do is that we both buy tickets for networking events. So these wouldn't be like um, big events per se, like GDC or Develop, um, but for like kind of local networking events, like we will buy a bulk tickets and we will just put them on the Slack and be like, if you want to go, let us know, we'll buy you some tickets for it. Because, and I'm sure like what you can kind of get from this presentation is, we're not really scared of our developers and our employees like leaving for greener pastures because we're giving them the freedom and the creativity and you know a really great workspace. Um, so if you know if we're worried about like those employees being poached by the studios, we we don't think you know we're not too terribly worried about it. Either. Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of the takeaway is that I think that a lot of companies kind of set up this cage around with restrictions and in some cases it is entirely fair, but in other cases I think. You know, it's this worry that employees are going to leave for something else. Whereas we've kind of taken this approach of like, we're just going to make a really cool place. And if it fits people, it fits people. If it doesn't, that's fine. It's not for you. Um, so yes, thank you for listening. Uh, sorry, I've been so jittery. <laughs> um, you can see like what we're up to on our website, but also um, I talk a lot about industry stuff on my Twitter too. So yes. <laughs>